Uh, my name is Bill Mercer. I'm called Merck to avoid confusion since there's another Bill here. Uh, I was on the QA team for Perception, so I played the game a whole bunch. So what's involved in doing QA? QA is largely sort of investigative gameplay. Uh, a lot of people when they hear quality assurance, when they think of games, they think a little bit more, you know, job where you play video games all day, which are not wrong. Uh, that's actually totally true. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's definitely a different style. So instead of just going through to get like your standard storyline, you're kind of like testing the boundaries of everything that the game is capable of handling, whatever may be missing. You know, maybe there's just not collision on something. So you might be walking through some walls or something, which you just then kind of, you know, put into a bug report. But largely the biggest thing is communication. So the big thing that you're doing is facilitating communication between the developers um, across the board through wherever they may be, since everything's done remotely on this project in particular. Uh, there's a lot more of that. We used a certain board that we would just kind of, like a message board that we would go on. I'd log the bugs and assign them to whoever needed to be go out to. And then they'd come back to me and I'd test them again, make sure they were all set. So Perception's kind of a different game because your character's blind. Yes. So what, what challenges does that provide you that maybe some other more normal games wouldn't? Initially, a lot of challenges, <laughs> uh, because like one of the biggest things is even in a game where you can see everything, uh, some of the worlds can seem so vast and they can seem so large and make it really difficult to navigate and you have to try and figure out where everything is. In perception, you're completely blind and everything that you're doing is using echolocation to see across the house. Uh, so a lot of what you run into is that it takes even more effort to learn where you are because you have to use a lot of noise to kind of get the layout of the actual house. Uh, but getting the layout or means also probably summoning the presence and dying and kind of going through the whole process again. Uh, but aside from that, once you sort of get used to that and get a rough idea of, you know, what you're looking at as far as being cautious, safe, and still maintaining a good level of exploration throughout the house and getting the layout, uh, it's really not that different. It just seems like it's really different from the get-go just because you do feel a little bit intimidated by the amount of darkness that you're constantly in. So what was maybe one of the hardest problems you had to solve? Oh, boy. So it's actually, this one wasn't necessarily... Uh, I, w I wouldn't call this one so much explorative as far as a problem. I just recall from a, from a standpoint, there was actually something that was not like just, you know, get the layout of the land kind of idea. Uh, we had an issue where there was um, something where the animations weren't, you know, processing properly or correctly. Uh, and this had plagued us for like weeks, probably even months uh, to a degree. We couldn't figure out what was going on. It was always inconsistent. We couldn't figure out why it was happening. Uh, and what we ended up figuring out was that at some point, a certain point, uh, is that in level three, if you're killed by the, the dolls, you get a different animation. It's the only animation of its kind. So when you get this animation, it turned out that the, there was something going on at the end of the animation or the beginning of the animation that was throwing off the rest of the animations any time throughout. So that was there was just this huge breaking point in between where you don't have anything to do with that. So this whole time we were like, there's something wrong with the bed. The bed, the bed is broken. Is it too low, too high? We just had all these different theories going around. Uh, it was like one of the worst like conspiracy circles that you've ever seen just constantly going in circles all the time. But uh, having gone back like 20 minutes of gameplay to be like, well, what if it could be this? Uh, we had gone back and tested it and it was, a huge revelation because that would have just like turned around so many different things. Um, so I guess we did start off by asking, how did you get into gaming? How did you get involved with deep end games and build and up? So that's probably like one of the most interesting things. Uh, initially, I had just been like I was working as an assistant manager at GameStop, uh, and Bill was a customer who would come in every so often. Uh, and I would help him out, you know, give him recommendations, just kind of talk shop, talk gaming and stuff like the latest and greatest. Uh, I was aware of Bill's gaming background and stuff like that. And I had seen, um, I, I recall I'd went to PAX East and I'd seen him kind of demoing the game. So I kind of sat down and tested the game out for the first time. Uh, and we talked about setting up a play test for Perception at the store, uh, which we had done. It was just like a closed employee session where we all could kind of come in and play the game and kind of see what it was all about. Uh, and I was like, you know, I'd love to, you know, try and do some more of this. And Bill was really receptive to that because the playtesting is really helpful. 
Uh, and what ended up happening is one of the play tests at a later time, you know, Bill start, approached a few of us who had been kind of consistent throughout the group about kind of continuing with coming on his QA instead of just, you know, coming into play test every so often, which was exciting enough as it was for us. Like seeing something in the development process is such a neat, like, kind of situation. You know, you always see the finished product or you see whatever's like floating around on YouTube and stuff like that, but you never like get a chance to really kind of get the real background on stuff. And like you get so much more opportunity to kind of give to the project, uh, whether that's input or insight or whatever it may be. Um, sometimes that's story narrative, sometimes that's things that make the game more scary, more fun and stuff like that. Uh, but it was very interesting coming into here. I mean, like the big thing is like everyone going, I think from the outside perspective, like, Gaming, the gaming industry always seems so large to the gamer, uh, so it was a really kind of, like, they, they told me, you know, like, you know, we're just, we just running out of, like, you know, a guest room in our house, and that was, I still, like, couldn't process that in, like, a simple thing, because, like, they were talking about it remotely, so I'm thinking, like, 70 people working on this remote project at all times, just, like, constantly plugging away, and then finally you come in and you see that it's just, it's not like, you know, it's so much smaller than you think. Like, it's just this, like, it's when you think of, like, a friend who's like, oh, I'm working on a video game. It's like, oh, well, you know, he's just doing his own thing. It actually is kind of, to a degree, that level of size. Uh, you just sort of come into that, and it's just pretty amazing to see how small it gets, like, to the point where we had had a conversation where I'd found out that my parents, who were local photographers in the area, I had done senior photos for Bill and Amanda so it kind of like all comes full circle for just like how small of a world it is and just kind of how small like it is kind of just setting up which is just so crazy like I'm seeing this complete game coming into completion and it really is it's just it was amazing seeing all these people come together to put this project together so what's, what's your personal game background my personal game background I play I've been playing video games forever uh, I love playing video games. Uh, too many and too many hours a day, more than I'll probably let any documentary know and probably some that on the other end people can certainly relate to, uh, whether that's MMOs or just putting an obscene amount of time into grinding a solo RPG that really was not that big of a deal in general anyways. But yeah, I've been playing since I was really young, you know. Uh, geez, my dad bought like a Donkey Kong arcade machine when I was like three years old and he just kind of had it in, in his, his bar area, his, his, his area for the guys. Uh, and I would always kind of just sneak in there to play that and then it kind of became clear that maybe Nintendo's the next step and then so forth and so forth. So the whole spectrum, the, the whole thing, I've kind of covered the, the whole way for it. So you got a personal favorite game? I do. Uh, and Bill's going to hate hearing this. Uh, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. He's, he's, he's going to cringe when he hears it, though. Uh, the personal favorite for me right now is The Last of Us. Oh! That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> he hates it. Uh, well, he doesn't hate it. He just he, he has his gripes about it. Um, uh, but, yeah, for me, I mean, like, that's... I feel like it does kind of fall into a similar kind of narrative kind of style. I really liked... Um, I would agree with a lot of people in the fact that there is sort of like a lot of generic kind of ideas floating around in the game itself, uh, whether that has to do with just sort of the fact that, you know, zombies are overplayed or whatnot. I definitely don't agree, disagree with that. That's totally true. Uh, but I've always been really big on like character dynamics and how characters influence each other and kind of grow throughout a process, uh, which I feel is like a really big kind of selling point to The Last of Us for me is I felt like these characters really did have a very natural growth from start to finish where they, you know, kind of totally hated each other. And then you kind of watch Joel grow from this character who, you know, starts out as, you know, kind of like beaten old dad who, you know, had like a really negative experience with, you know, his daughter dying at the start of the whole thing, uh, all the way to the point where, you know, he kind of, Things become a little, the, the lines get a little blurred. He sees things indistinguishable when he kind of starts getting Ellie into that same area because she's now of Sarah's age. Any crazy stories just that happened or anything you want to talk about that we didn't ask you about? Crazy stories. I don't know. Like, so with, as far as just like working in the Deep End games, the Deep End games for me is like a really, um, this has been like one of the most, not one of, this has been the most unique work experience I've ever had. Uh, there was so much change in a work atmosphere when something that's a little bit more impersonal, like I don't want to say impersonal because it actually makes it more personal, 
uh, where you're coming into the house and you're coming downstairs, you can hear the kids upstairs, the kids are coming down, they're, help, they're you know, talking to either Bill, sometimes they're talking to me, you know, whether it's questions about video games. But often, most of the times, you know, they just want to kind of catch up with Dad and see what's going on. They want to catch up with Amanda if she's, you know, working through emails or testing the game herself, writing, whatever it is. Uh, it's really, like, that's probably the most rewarding part of the experience for me. It's like, working on the game has been, like, kind of a really interesting thing. But you definitely get to see a lot more of, like, the... You, when you're working for the Deep End Games, you're not just invited to come work in a game. You're kind of like invited to come like be a part of the family for a while because, I mean, like ultimately what's happening is, you know, they're inviting you into their life. You're not just coming in to sit down and do some work and go home. You don't punch out at the end of the day. You know, you sit around, you have conversations, you share things that you like, whether it's video games or music and stuff like that. Uh, and you meet people. You meet people that are part of the industry. You meet people that are part of the family. And, you know, that's kind of a very welcoming experience as far as, like, working for the Deep End Games goes. <laughs>